Okay, in this video, what I want to do is kind of look at the endocrine system again, but even more specifically, uh, tailor it specifically to looking at receptors and the hormones themselves. So once again, we're looking at a system that puts hormones into the circulatory system, and these hormones will act on specific tissues or cells. And what I want you to kind of understand is how that can really happen. And how that does happen is by these concepts or these proteins that we refer to as receptors. And what we're going to see is hormones and receptors uh, are interrelated in the sense that the receptors are very specific for a very particular hormone. Uh, what I mean by that is hormone A doesn't act on any receptor. It's only going to act on a very specific receptor for that hormone. All right, so this is what we're kind of looking at. Uh, what we're going to run into is when we course through the blood, we're going to have our cell membrane. In that cell membrane, we're going to have a receptor. So this is a protein that is going across that lipid bilayer. And what you're going to see on it, it's going to have a very specific shape. And that specific shape is going to correlate to a hormone. So if I draw a couple hormones here, we can see maybe there's a round hormone. So this could be a hormone that maybe luteinizing hormone is going to cause ovulation to occur. But also in the blood, we may have a square-shaped hormone. And once again, I'm just trying to signify shape here. And as you can see, if we look at this, this one, when it tries to bind here, will not, whereas this one can bind to that receptor. So, as you can see, this one will not go in here. This one will. So we got a receptor hormone relationship here. So we got a specific relationship. Now this is where we come into different types. So if you remember in the overview video, these hormones can come in proteins, so they're amino acid sequences, or they may be steroid. And interestingly, they act a little bit differently in some cases. So what we're seeing over here, what I'm going to draw here, this is an example of what we see in a protein. This protein here is unable to go through the cell membrane by itself. Therefore, we have to have a receptor. And another vocabulary we're going to see is this is referred to, or at least the hormone, is what we call a first messenger. So it's what's trying to give the communication. And because the binding occurs, it's going to cause a change in the shape. So if we look at this, I can draw an arrow, we're going to have a change in shape. And this change in shape is going to then cause a series, or what we call a cascade, of events to occur downstream. So once this hormone right here binds to this receptor, we will then have a certain reaction occur, and then we start to see a series of different events occur. And those events will eventually change the cell. And this can mean a couple things. Maybe this is a hormone that causes it to divide cells. Maybe this is a hormone that wants a certain gene to be made or causes a translation to occur. Maybe it just wants to activate an inactive form of a chemical that's residing in the cytoplasm. The point is, the binding of this hormone to this receptor creates a series of events that causes a certain action to occur. And we call this a second messenger system. And this is a very simple way of looking at it. But basically, the idea is the first messenger isn't able to do the job directly, so it recruits right here what we call a second messenger. Then that cascade of events occurs, and we see the change in the cell. Now, steroid hormones may be a little bit different. So steroid hormones, if you remember, they are derived, typically, from cholesterol. Uh, so this means they are lipids. And lipids typically, lipids, can diffuse through the lipid bilayer. So now we don't necessarily need a cell membrane receptor. We just need uh, maybe a receptor in the cytoplasm. So here we got the lipid bilayer. We can go right through it. So if we redraw this, so here's my cell membrane again, my lipid bilayer, and I have a steroid hormone. So let's maybe draw that in green here. And as goofy.
goofy shape here, but the point is it can go right through the membrane. All right, so it zips through. And then what we find inside is a receptor for it. So maybe we find a receptor that looks like this. And now we can clearly see that this steroid can fit in the notch here. And in a lot of cases with steroid hormones, we go into the nucleus and then turn on or off genes. So once again, if we look at this real basic system, we got the receptors and the hormones. Uh, the receptors for the hormones here are very specific uh, to the hormone. In the case of a protein or amino acid-based protein, that amino acid called the first messenger will bind, or amino acid sequence will bind to receptor. It recruits what we call a second messenger. And a cascade of events eventually lead to the change in the cell. So maybe metabolism, causing it to divide, a number of things. A steroid hormone, what we have here, that's going to be a little different because since it's derived from a lipid, it can go right through the cell membrane. Then it usually finds a cytoplasmic receptor. So it's still going to have a receptor, typically. And then once it binds to the cytoplasmic receptor, it can then move into the nucleus, where it usually changes translation. So it induces or prevents transcription from occur, which means you're preventing proteins from being made or you're causing proteins being made. So hopefully that's a good overview of receptors and hormones.